Okay, I'm just joking. I have a mic. Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to set up Melon DS for Wi Fi play for Pokemon Black and White, but this applies to pretty much any DS game. So I'm going to go pretty fast. Please follow along. Please pause the video if you need to, and please feel free to rewind it, slow it down, fast forward, whatever you need to. So this is assuming that you've already downloaded some files or generated some files. So I'm going to assume that you have a ROM link for whatever Pokemon game you want to play. This is what I ripped for my cartridge right here, or what you may have downloaded from elsewhere. And then I'm going to assume that you also have already ripped your BIOS and DSi firmware and DS and DSi firmware for this setup today. So once you have that in an unzipped file right here or an unzipped folder rather, and then your ROM file, then we just need to head over to Melon DS and then get it going. So let's just open up our preferred browser of choice, type in Melon DS. Whoop, and I'm not going to go to the Copilot answer because let's not support AI. So we'll just go over here, Melon, Melon DS 1.0 release candidate. Great. We're on a Windows machine, but this works for any other OS or operating system that you may have. Windows. Wait for this to download. All right, great. And we're going to keep Edge open for now. So let's open that up in our downloads, bring that over to here, bring this over to our files. So let's extract it, however you extract things, whether that's extract hole up here, but I just like to do 7-zip extract here. Just bring it out. Great, done with that zip file. Launch Melon DS, beautiful. Now, yeah, and we're pretty much already there. Uh, let's go up to emu settings for the emulator settings. We're gonna be emulating a DSi we're going to be using external bootware files or firmware files. So this could be the DS files. So be sure you don't get the DSi. We're doing the NDS 7. Oh, my fault. That was the NDS 9. NDS 9. NDS 7. And DS firmware. Then we move over to DSi mode, in which we need the DSi 9. DSi 7. DSi firmware. And the DSi NAND. All right, there we go. And we do not click full BIOS boot. Doing that causes your game to crash. All right, and that's everything we need for emulation settings. Oop. You can set up some inputs and hotkeys. I like to use my left hand for movement and then my number pad for the X, Y, A, B buttons. And then select start. And then I'm gonna use a power button as well. So we got all the face buttons set up. And then I'm always sure to set a toggle full screen button for F11 just to go in and out of full screen, makes it a bit easier. And then what I want you to do is set a power button. This could be the same as hitting the power switch on an actual DS console. You'll see why it makes sense later. But so we got our number buttons and then we have all of our extra buttons, which is full screen power. And you can add whatever else you want here as well. Right. So. We're also going to go over to config settings, emu. Great. We have emulator set up. We just did that. And now we have to go over the firmware settings. This allows us to just override the firmware. Pretty easy. And this just helps out for some other mix matching that could have happened when you downloaded your firmware from your actual DS to here. You don't want to make it so they're copied. And especially if you've got your firmware from elsewhere, where that means that you might be matching firmware IDs with another person, it just helps us to reset it here. So I'm going to set it as user. Um, my birthday is February 2nd. I'm going to be speaking English. My color, we'll do, we'll do dark green. Uh, message, hello, smiley. And then this is a MAC address. Now, leaving this as the default MAC address means that it will use the same address as the firmware. That's actually pretty bad. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go over to this website to generate a random Mac address. And sure, we just need one boop, generate Mac. And we just need these last three. Boop, and those are the last three. And then I personally like using Nintendo's prefix for DS consoles just to make it look like an actual DS console. So that's CC9E00, and then those last three sets or six characters we generated. 
So with that, we have our firmware settings set up for username, birth date, color, MAC address, as well as emulator settings. And with that all set up, let's just hit boot firmware to start it. Oop, and you can click on the touch screen. Great. So now let's set up internet. We have one more thing to double check. Great, great. Okay, let's actually make sure that is fine again. So this is in this PC, desktop, download files. Okay, great. Internet connection settings. Now there's already a setup here but we're just gonna clear everything out that's already here. And we also need to delete our firmware, or sorry, delete our Nintendo WFC configuration. So we delete that, just get everything reset for our new installation. System information, here we have the MAC address that we just entered in earlier, that's CC9E00, and then the last three sets are random numbers we generated. Connection settings, connection one, search for access point, and we wait. MelonDS operates by having it connect to a dummy access point within the emulator, and then that uses your actual internet to connect to the internet. Ooh. So we need to connect to these settings. Connect. Ooh. All right, and then we see signal goes green it's connecting to the internet connection test successful all right now let's go into options oh sorry connection settings setup complete and then change settings now we need to change the dns settings for pokemon specifically this allows us to connect to the Gen 4 and 5 fan Pokemon servers that are set up, so we can still use internet, even though Nintendo servers are down. And that is 178-062-043-212. All of the numbers are in the description, as well as all links associated that I can provide. Again, you will need to get your own ROM file and your own DS firmware files. And so for this, I have the primary DNA primary DNS as that Pokemon server, and then the secondary DNS is just Google's own DNS server for any other internet traffic it may need. And then we do connect, we do save, and it will do a connection tense once more. Well, that's going. There's a couple of more things that we can do. Oh, connection test finished. Now we can come back out. We can go into path settings to set up a save files path. So we're in like our folder for MelonDS. So let me just create a new one for saves just to keep everything constant. And then new one for save states. And then new one for cheats. And we hit OK. And the emulation will need to be reset with that reload. And you could have done that before we started here as well. So let's double check and make sure our internet, our internet settings went through. Connection tests are complete. Change settings. And our DNS setup is here. Detailed setup, still the same. So let's back out. All right, everything's all good now. Let's us do inject cart. This allows you to inject a ROM file like it's a cartridge. And then boom, there we see Pokemon Black version. Let's start it up. All right, so now let's test Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. This little settings option just tells you to use the previous 
settings menu in the DSi menu. If you were on an original DS, this would let you use the settings there. So let's go to Mystery Gift. And let's connect to Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. And I just made a full screen with a full screen button that we set earlier. And Mewtwo returns! So let's receive this. This is just a mystery gift. Pokemon Company would distribute Pokemon event items, etc. through an online service. This is a fan service recreating that. So you just continuously search for a gift. It gives you a random item that was distributed over a period of time during Pokemon Black and White's run. You may have to reload Mystery Gift multiple times to look for a very specific Pokemon or item you're looking for. But this just proves that internet works. And this works for all of Pokemon's internet features. That's trading, battling, etc. Now you may run into some issues if one person is playing on real DS hardware and connecting to the internet, and one person is playing on Melon DS. For those situations, such as in a Wi-Fi union room, if the person on the DS talks to the emulated person first, that results in a crash. You have to wait for the emulated character to talk to you in order to play online. That's just something to keep in mind. But Pokemon Black and White, working with functional Wi-Fi. And so that's how you get everything set up. And feel free to comment if you have any questions. I'll go over and troubleshoot with you. And... Hope you all enjoy playing Pokemon Black and Pokemon White for yourselves.